if you're applying for UK visas as co-founders, so in other words, you're both going to be founders of the UK entity that you're intending to set up, then there's different approaches depending on which visa route you're applying under. In this video, we're going to have a look at the Global Talent Visa versus the Innovator Visa and Startup Visa. So for the Innovator Visa and Startup Visa, you can apply as co-founders, but long term, there's going to be a potential challenge. And that's that when you come to apply for the uh, indefinite leave to remain at the end of the Innovator Visa period, so that could be you know, after you've made the switch to, from startup to innovator, or if you're applying for innovator straight away when you get to the end of the visa term, then you can't both rely on the uh, same uh, success criteria in the narrow sense that let's say that 50,000 has been invested, you can't both rely on that 50,000 pounds. You need to each rely on a separate uh, 50,000 uh, pounds. The same applies for many of the other criteria. Some of them can't be doubled in that way. Let's say, for example, uh, the criterion, the success criterion, which I've looked at uh, in previous videos um, about um, showing that you've been more successful than um, than other uh, uh, companies effectively doing the same the same thing as you or within the same subsector, and you've doubled the number of customers. Um, it's difficult for you to both uh, be relying on that. So it restricts your options unless you're going to be you know, phenomenally successful, generate a great deal of income. Applying as co-founders can be tricky when it comes to the indefinite leave to remain stage. There's also a bit of scope uh, where there are co-founders at that stage for potential conflict in that uh, it, it may be that naturally you both want to achieve indefinite leave to remain, but there's only enough uh, on the table to get one person through. Well, in that case, um, you'd need to be having a look at one person applying for indefinite leave to remain and the other applying for an extension uh, and then applying for indefinite leave to remain at a, at a later stage, let's say. Uh, so, uh, so that is uh, one approach. But these considerations you need to think about before applying as an entrepreneurial team on the startup or innovator route. Uh, one a way you might want to structure things instead is for you each to apply separately in respect of distinct uh, business ideas, but each owning 100% and controlling uh, one entity yourself. So one person has one entity, one person, one business, and you each control 100% uh, of your entity and then uh, pursue uh, effectively parallel paths. They may be complementary, there may be some uh, interaction uh, between the two businesses, uh, but they would be uh, they would be distinct, and that way you wouldn't set yourself up for any uh, potential challenges uh, or any any potential difficulties when you get to indefinite leave to remain. Now, this isn't an issue for uh, my clients, where uh, we've had a look at this at the very beginning, at the outset, and they're applying as co-founders. But there's in each case. Uh, you know, I've I've raised this and we've looked together at the strategy uh, for the legal strategy for uh, securing indefinite leave to remain. Um, and uh, usually that's going to be premised either on revenue or on the uh, number of jobs uh, created, although that's not mandatory. Um, there's a strategy in place uh, where there are co-founders. So better to consider it at the beginning and not at the end. Now, if we switch over to the global talent uh, visa, uh, can you apply as co-founders? I mean, that's the starting point. Can you apply as a uh, entrepreneurial team under the uh, global talent route? Well, the answer is there's no specific uh, way of, of doing that in the way that it's catered for in the immigration rules for innovative visa and the startup visa. So there's no specific provision for it, but there's nothing to stop you from doing that. You can apply as co-founders, but there's the question of the sequencing of the application. Um, ought you to apply together? Well, I've got some, some views on this. Uh, it's important as a starting point uh, to, to look at uh, how you frame the uh, uh, global talent application. So with a global talent application, um, it's not about the business plan you have, it's about your individual merits. Now, as an element uh, of 
of the application is about the proposition for what you're going to be doing in the UK. But that doesn't, it's not necessarily in connection with a, with a business. Um, there needs to be a vision for the UK, but the accent's not on, on that. The accent is on your, uh, your achievements and your, your recognition in the sector. So, so one way to approach this is, as I've said um, in previous videos on the Global Talent Visa, the easier skills to verify are the technical skills if you're applying under the technical stream. And so if you have a technical person and a business person, one person going under the technical stream, the other person go under the, going under the business stream, then you might want to, depending on the merits, go for the technical person first, if their skills are easier uh, to verify, and get that granted. And after the grant, then apply for the uh, business person. Now, maybe that you want to do it the other way around if the business person has more verifiable entrepreneurial achievements. Uh, but the technical skills are generally easier to verify uh, in combination with recognition from the sector in the, in the form of the references that you gather. But what you want to really avoid is a situation where you each claim achievements in respect of the same matters. So if the applications are effectively identical or in all material respects identical and, and claiming, uh, claiming the same matters um, in the same, res the, the same respect, by which I mean um, citing achievements and contributions which are effectively the same. Because if you put yourself in the position of the person considering the application, they want to know, okay, what contributions did you, did you make? And if there's two people each claiming the same achievement and also claiming the same uh, contributions to that achievement, that's quite, uh, that's quite difficult. So um, you'll want to uh, get reasonably attribute uh, uh, your uh, contribution in respect of a particular achievement and then make it clear to what extent you contributed and to what extent the other person contributed. Uh, generally having applications, you know, uh, concurrent applications made at the same time is going to create the potential for confusion, the potential for um, either inconsistencies or mis misunderstandings. So you might want to just sequence it, uh, do it sequentially. So one person followed by the, uh, the other. Um, this, of course, still a, a need uh, for it to be compellingly presented and uh, for it to be you know, a consistent account of your uh, genuine contributions. Uh, but that may be the best way to approach it rather than as you would in a startup or innovator scenario, uh, apply together at the same time as an entrepreneurial team. Um, so sim there are, there's a similar set of considerations when you're looking at the business plan as co-founders because you'll want to set out in this business plan to what extent each of you is contributing to the business for the startup and innovator uh, visas. What's going to be the distribution of labor and whose business idea is it effectively? Is it a joint business idea? Um, I've spoken before about this danger of piggybacking. You can't piggyback uh, necessarily off, off someone else's idea. Um, you've got to have made a, you know, a, a material contribution uh, to the idea and, and to the uh, business plan. So um, wherever there's more than one person, um, then the question is, who's the prime mover? And if there's uh, going to be co-founders then one of the considerations would be, okay, what's the distribution of, of shares or the proposed distribution of shares for the um, entity that's going to be uh, incorporated? And if there's any imbalance, then the, uh, the, the person who has uh, less shares, let's say, or, or less of a clear contribution is going to be potentially disadvantaged. And the other point is, if one person is uh, uh, is refused, then that jeopardizes the other person's application potentially. Because if the idea is that you are applying together and each making very important contributions, what happens if the other person drops out? Well, you know, does that compromise the first person's application? Potentially, yes. And this is why, again, with the innovative visa and startup visa, it's best con to consider, okay, do you really need to do this as co-founders? Or um, is there really uh, two different propositions conceptually when looking at the business idea, which can be separated out with each person uh, pursuing their, their own idea and uh, independently, but maybe in collaboration under two distinct visas. 
and uh, under two distinct uh, business plans. So those are some considerations to take into account. Um, just a quick point again about the contrast. When you get to the end of the global talent visa pathway after three years, the advantage is that you do not need to apply for another uh, endorsement. You only need to accrue the three years that you need for indefinite leave to remain under the global talent route and show that you have paid, that you have earned some money under the route. Whereas for the uh, for the innovator visa, at the end of that three year term, you need another endorsement in order to then apply for indefinite leave to remain or another endorsement in order to continue your visa, in which case the uh, um, the potential challenges that might arise with co-founders uh, don't really apply. In that case, you'd simply need to show that you have uh, made significant achievements along with um, the other checklist that I've, I've provided in the previous video. So, um, so I, ho I hope that's helpful. Um, if you do have, you know, the option or you're thinking about this, then very happy to uh, to assist you. And I have a consultation service uh, as a lawyer, and the uh, link for that is in the description below and in the uh, comment that's pinned below. Many thanks. Bye for now.